Let's do an example to see how the change of variables formula works. So remember the formula says that the double integral over r of f with respect to area is the double integral over s of f composed with the transformation t times the absolute value of the Jacobian with respect to area, where t is a transformation from the region s in the uv plane to the region r in the xy plane, which is a differentiable bijection between these two regions. So an example of how this works is changing to polar coordinates. So when we change the polar coordinates, we want to replace the x and y coordinates with the polar coordinates r and theta. So let's say we take u to equal r and v to equal theta. Okay, so my picture is no longer very well to scale. But anyway, what happens when we change to the r and theta coordinates? Well, so we have to compute the magnification factor, the Jacobian. So here x is r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. And what's the Jacobian? So d of xy with respect to r theta, so it's the determinant of dx dr, dx d theta, dy dr, dy d theta. And let's figure this out. So this is the determinant of, so dx dr is cosine theta, dx d theta is minus r sine theta, dy dr is sine theta, and dy d theta is r cosine theta. Um, so this is, so the product of these diagonal entries is r cosine squared theta, and they have to subtract the product of the other two entries, which is minus r sine squared theta. So this is r times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, so it's just r. And that's the magnification factor we got before. So we get that the double integral over r of f, say of x and y, dA, is the double integral over s of f in the polar coordinates r and theta times then the absolute value of the Jacobian is the absolute value of r, and let's stick with r positive here. So I get r, and then um, the area element over here. Which, when you expand this out, if you do this as an, inter as an iterated integral, then the dA becomes dr d theta. So this recovers the formula for integrating in polar coordinates that we saw before. We can also see what happens in spherical coordinates this way. We'll do that in the next lecture segment.